Shalom Aleichem Rabbi Sai. Welcome once again to 11 at 11, heard each and every Thursday evening. And something has happened in the last week, week and a half or so, which is that uh, Ephraim Goldberg, he wants to get in the last word. And not only does he want to get in the last word, but he wants to get in the last word and, and play tremendously with the truth and play us all for fools as if we're going to swallow the snaky uh, 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 things that he says. And therefore, uh, although it's very hard because we have a limited amount of time, I'm going to play a large clip from what he just did. Um, there's a fellow, a young man, who's a well-meaning young fellow, uh, not a big Amkin, that's for sure. You'll hear this from his uh, questioning and his, uh, state, his own statement. His name is Nafi Gordon, and he has a very popular, uh, very popular, I don't know if it's called a podcast or a YouTube, whatever, where he interviews different people prominent in the community. And it basically promotes these people, and, you know, it's not controversial usually. And he's done this with Ephraim Goldberg. And now, all of a sudden, Ephraim Goldberg is, is getting another interview with him, the truth about the missionary situation, the truth. Now, in order that people should notice that this is happening, it has around 5,700 hits on YouTube. So it's advertised in Yeshiva World News. When they have advertisements, they're advertising it. Now, I don't believe that Nachi Gordon is paying for it. So probably Ephraim Goldberg is paying for it. Somebody, I assume, is paying for it. I don't think Yeshiva World News is advertising this for free, that people should go there to hear, quote-unquote, the truth. So it would seem, I'm not sure, but if I, I would like to stand corrected and find out if anybody is financing this. Uh, but obviously, Ephraim Goldberg is feeling the heat, and he has to try to explain away having a missionary in a shul because it's desperate, that Kali so desperately needs Ephraim Goldberg to, the, to work with the Latino coalition of evangelicals to support the state of Israel. Otherwise, you know we're going to go under. That's why you have to have it, you have to have it in the etc. So I'm going to play an unusually long clip of Ephraim Goldberg, because, and I want people to listen carefully, and then I'm going to show you the snaky prevarications and dreyachs that he's doing, that he's trying to perp perpetrate on the tzibur. And it's very unfortunate. So please, this is a long clip, but please listen carefully. And then we're going to comment again on Rav Moshe and, and Rabbi Yosha Bel Shalavechik, and we're going to try to, uh, to, to get to the bottom of this. So um, let's do clip number two, uh, Rabbi Goldberg, please. Rabbi Goldberg, you have been the subject of a lot of criticism lately. Um, a heretic, um, Hitler's rabbi, some headline online would, would show, some awful, awful things uh, were said about you for um, an event that you had in Boca Raton a couple of weeks ago uh, featuring Ben Shapiro, David Friedman, Governor DeSantis, and one other individual. Well, I don't know his name even, but um, people are, are saying that you invited a missionary to your shul. And I just want to give you the opportunity to, to speak to that. And, um, yeah. So um, it was an enormously successful event. We had a 1,000 people there and the pack of Jews and non-Jews. It was done together with the Latino Coalition for Israel. And it was an evening to combat anti-Semitism, to stand up for Israel. Um, and I'm really grateful. It was an enormous success. We did it in partnership, as I said, with the Latino Coalition for Israel. And it did attract some negative attention. Um, look, the attention it attracted was from people who are not, let's just call them mainstream, not accepted, believed. Uh, everything we do at Boker Ton Synagogue, we believe in Das Torah. We believe in our Rebbeim, we believe in Tamidei Chachamim, we believe in Gedol Yisrael. And we believe that even if we are inspired to be entrepreneurial or creative in doing a program, for a good reason. I promise you I got nothing out of the evening. There was no money in the pocket. There certainly was no honor or fame. Uh, what I got out was needing extra security, uh, death threats, protection. Um, and so there was no agenda and there was no motivation other than to stand up for Israel and to stand up against anti-Semitism. So, well, even we have creative entrepreneurial ways of uh, doing things, that we're thinking of doing things, we do everything asking Rebbeim. I, I speak to my Rebbe, Mori Rabbi Rav Shechter, I'm very close with other great Rabbanim. Uh, and on this topic, we speak to Rav Yitzhak Adlerstein, Rabbi Adlerstein, who's a Musmach of Chavz Chaim, is a Ben Torah, 
He's a Talmud Chacham. He's the director of Inter Affairs for the Wiesenthal Center. And I refer you, anyone who's listening, who wants to understand more in-depth interfaith issues and the difference between dialogue, which we don't believe in, we don't believe in religious dialogue, we don't believe in religious engagement, religious study, comparative religion, we don't believe in any of that. But cooperation, not only do we believe in, everybody believes in. I hate to break it to you, Nachi, it was the, the, the two individuals, and I will not stoop to their level by Khalila calling them a name or, or anything like that, the two individuals who I think are severely misguided and, and have whatever agendas they have, um, they, you know, they turn their ire towards me for whatever reason, but they get equally pointed towards, and I can go on and on, I don't want to take up all of our time right now, but telling you the recipients, the beneficiaries, or the very people who cooperate on a regular basis with other religions, whether it's Agudas Yisrael cooperating with the Archdiocese of New York to help pay for parochial schools or reopen schools and shuls during Corona, you're helping reopen churches, you're helping getting money for churches. Why were they allowed to do that? They're right. very cooperate. Whether it's Migdalor of Grossman Sadik, who received money from Pastor E on a regular basis, and whether it's just a few months ago, Maina Yeshua Hospital, Haredi Hospital in Tanya, led by and with the consent of the uh, the Sons Kloisenberg received incubators, other important medical equipment that was sponsored by Christians, evangelicals in America. The cooperation is going on all the time. It doesn't often go on in a shul. It goes on at APAC, at JNF, at uh, other venues, or they just receive a check from those places, or I go to Israel, there are meetings that happen behind closed doors. In our case, we felt um, we had an agenda. This was before anyone was held hostage in Texas. This was before anti-Semitism has come back on the agenda, but we all know that we're afraid of it, and it's a grave concern, and, and we need to turn to those who care and are sensitive and are willing to step up and stand out on it. So the event and the person that we did it with, the person who was vetted, by the way, pastor who leads the Latino Coalition for Israel was vetted and does not missionize and um, so that, I think that's an, an important thing right there I um, I can't and we've discussed this I can't even tell you how many messages I got um, you know about the situation over there and and people would really go to and say Rabbi Ephraim Goldberg brought a missionary into his shul there are people who are uh, susceptible to being converted to evangelical Christianity in Boca Raton, and Rabbi Ephraim Goldberg is, is bringing that person to his shul. Um, that statement, can you yeah. either agree with it or squash it? Like, we go with it. Ever, 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 ever agree with it. We would never, ever bring a missionary to our shul. Of course not. We combat missionaries. We, once a year, twice a year, every other year, I find out there's a missionary in the neighborhood handing out literature and knocking on doors. We drive them from the neighborhood. We raise our voice, we say, not in our backyard, get lost. Because those people are actively trying to missionize and convert. And that's a real issue. And the Jewish people have to be vigilant. We have to care about and We have to confront that issue. There is a fundamental difference between people who missionize and evangelicals who we can cooperate with when they have been properly vetted. Again, I refer you really to the Behind the Bima and the hour interview with Rabbi Anderson where he really unpacked it. But I'll just tell you, because this is the real key Nakuda, this is the key point, that that not only should people listen to, but you should see the emails I got today apologizing. Not, not the actual main agitators, who would never apologize. They continue right. to forge letter from um, embarrassing, shameful. They would never apologize. But some of the people swept up in their mob mentality have come to learn more about the subject and realize that they were wrong and have actually come out and, and apologized. <laughs> Interesting. chose to apologize and ask to preserve the anonymity, even though they had no problem using their name when they you know, posted and emailed and uh, spread whatever that they did. So the fundamental difference is, is the following. Um, evangelical means to, to missionize in the sense that just like every Jew who says Aleinu and talks about at the end of Aleinu, our dream and our hope that every human on earth one day will see Hashem Achad Achad, we have a vision for B'nai Noach that they should keep the sect of Noachide laws. So Nachi, you and I both have a fundamental belief and a vision for the way every non-Jew live. And yet, we don't missionize, we don't knock on doors, we don't proselytize, we don't actively recruit to convert. So similarly, there are missionaries who we should combat and oppose and confront, and then there are evangelicals who have a vision, but yet they do not missionize. What's amazing is the following. Evangelicals believe in the land of Israel. Genesis 12, 1 through 3. They believe whoever blesses the Jewish people is blessed, whoever curses is cursed. Most of our people, they think that's a nice idea, it's a nice thought, it's a good for it. They believe it to their core. 
if they attach themselves and they bless and they support the Jewish people, they will be blessed. And if they do the opposite, then they will be cursed. They believe it. They believe it to their core. So they are committed. First of all, they apologize for the history of Christian persecution and oppression. They take responsibility, evangelicals. They recognize their role in it. And they believe that they need to bless the Jewish people and protect the land of Israel. They fund them. They, they, their commitment to support the land of Israel, the state of Israel, supersedes its docha. It's more important to them than, than missionizing. Okay, Rabbi Shai, there's a lot, a lot to unpack over here, but I want to point out some of the things that, that we heard. First of all, we heard an innocent, inexperienced, not a deep person, a facilitator, you know, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Nachi is doing an interview on a provocative subject with Rabbi Goldberg, and he says there was David Friedman and Ben Shapiro, and there was another guy, I don't even know his name. He doesn't even know the name of the, of the Galach. He doesn't even bother to go on the Internet and find out what we heard, which anybody can hear by doing a two-minute Google on a Mario Bramnik that clearly establishes he's a missionary. And then you have Rabbi, Rabbi Ephraim Goldberg telling us that he's vetted, that he was vetted, he was checked out Bramnik, and he's definitely not a missionary. He's not somebody, he's just a regular evangelical. He has no interest in converting Jews. So because of this, to, to put this lie, the buck saying, to go with the buck teeth, to go and to say such a thing, and he can't even be challenged by Nafi Gordon because Nafi Gordon doesn't even do his homework. So this is a pure propaganda piece and a lie. So, um, I want to stop before I go further, and I want to just replay. And I'd like to understand how Ephraim Goldberg understands this. And uh, I think Nachi Goldberg owes the Jewish community. He's a nice guy, nice little sweet innocent, but way Nachi above Gordon. his head being used as a dupe, as a fool by Ephraim Goldberg. I think Nachi, Nachi has an achrayas now to listen to more of these tapes and to apologize. Without further ado, we're going to the clip three. Clip three of Mario Bramnick. Can you tell me if this is a missionary uh, or not? God spoke to us and he said, I'm pouring out my glory upon the church to provoke the Jewish people to jealousy. And the Lord spoke to me and the Lord said, Son, I am releasing my glory upon the church to awaken the Jewish people. Church, go if there was ever a time to go it is now and the lord spoke to us god is pouring out his glory upon the church to provoke the jewish people to jealousy so that you and i can embrace our jewish brethren and tell them about the love of messiah and the day that we're living in israel is god's end time clock but it is also god's end time glory watch israel Prepare the way of the Lord. The Lord is coming back soon. We are living in the most exciting time in history. I'm here to tell you Mashiach is coming soon. There are rabbis, orthodox rabbis that know and are crying out, we want Mashiach. Mashiach, Messiah is coming now. Rabbi Shlomo Amar the former Sephardic chief rabbi of Israel said, we are in the time of preparation of Messiah. God is coming back soon. I want you to create, God is coming back soon. Now's the time of salvation. Now's the time of awakening. It's time to see entire household saved. and Armageddon for the day of the messianic church is over it's time for the church of Jesus Christ to arise 
This is our greatest hour. In the midst of darkness and deep darkness, arise and shine, for God's glory is about to be poured out upon God's people, and I believe it's going to be a sign to Israel. Arise and shine, O Israel, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. There's more authority here than in the White House. We are the ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ on earth. Go to be witnesses throughout all the earth. Yeah, yes, he vetted. Goldberg and Adlerstein vetted. And by the way, you notice, he says, I do everything with Das Torah. He says, my Rebbe Rav Shechta. But if you notice carefully, he did not say, I consulted with Rabbi Shechta here. And Rabbi Shechta, through his household, through his wife, or whatever, said that he's neutral. How he could be neutral, I don't know. His two sons went down there. He has an achrayas to clarify this for two reasons. He's the Rebbe of Goldberg. And his sons went down there and posed and gave moral encouragement for this. And it's clear from what we just heard that this guy is an outright missionary, besides being a mishumid. You notice his Das Torah, all of a sudden he elevated to a Godel status on something that he admits is controversial. He says, I do entrepreneurial creative things. Look at this snaky Lishonis. In other words, he says... Other people do it. They take people into APAC. They take people into clay uh, stadiums. I took them into a shul because I felt, we felt now it's necessary to do that. So he admits that he's going further than anybody else. And his head to, to do this is the great Das Torah who vetted things, Adlerstein. If Adlerstein vetted things, okay, if Adlerstein vetted things, then he's either a chakran or dupe or both. And Adlerstein also owes a big, a big apology. So we have a long list of people who, uh, who, uh, who have to really apologize and clarify this to the firm community that they're trying to pull the wool over our eyes. Did you hear what he says? He compares us, the Yidden, when we say, came the Kabbalah, the Hashem, the Kenu, that we are going to evangelize. So they evangelize for Yashka, they say whatever they evangelize for. We evangelize for the Rebbeinu Shalom, the Havah. Understand? And we're all evangelizers, kumbaya, but there's no missionizing going on because we don't missionize. I mean, do you understand the kind of the person? Now, who... so, yeah, this is a very... Uh... Uh, being a, a mi- major misjudgment, and uh, and of course you know in Hilchas Avodah you have to go the Chumra for any slightest suffer. Over here is is very strong. Uh, the 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 side of Chumra is much stronger than the side of Kula here, and uh, you know the, let's let's even say the best case scenario, which is that this guy evangelizes in his church. And doesn't uh, evangelize outside the church, but the point is that when if you have a guy who is on, that, that's the best case, that's the biggest downchavtchus of the guy. Which I don't know why we we should be chayv to be downchavtchus. The guy is a you know he's a mesis. You're not down a mesis of chavtchus. But uh, but even in that best case scenario, why would you take into and give uh, Messiah the Avera give give credence? To a person like that, who then can go, he, he, he may not missionize in your synagogue, but then now he goes out and he has a big hechshet to go out and do damage. Now he said, absolutely, absolutely, he plays us for a fool. Like uh, we're worried that right now people who are sitting in that thousand people uh, gathering are going to become uh, Jews for J. That's not what we're concerned about. We are concerned that in the past he's done things, Bramnik that were associated with chosen people ministers that are the sponsors of Jews for J. All of this was, quote-unquote, vetted. The, the Sheker is unbelievable, and I'm very proud that Ephraim Goldberg says there are two misguided individuals. Uh, obviously, one of them is Rabbi Aaron Ruvain, uh, and the other one, obviously, I, I don't know of anybody else, is Yehud Levin, and I take this very, very proudly. And I want to ask the following question. If Rev. Moshe, Rev. Yaakov, or, or Rev. Yosheb Ber Salavechik 
would be sitting in that shul, in that audience, Ephraim Goldberg would be able to do what he's doing. Would Rabbi Schechter sit there in the shul knowing the background of this Mario Bramnik and, and allow this to take place, his Rebbe? Would he allow him to do this? Of course not. It's ridiculous. Would, would, they, uh, would they, these above mentioned uh, Hashuvim, sit in the shul where he had Dr. Ruth Westheimer the, who, who pushes arias and perversion. No, he didn't speak to her about techniques of intimacy. He spoke to her about her quote-unquote orthodox background, etc. But you pasture up such people and you do this. He's very proud of himself under the rubric of he's entrepreneurial and he's creative. What he's doing is he brings them the seaboard. He, he promotes people like May Mayor K, the misguided person who gives Mishkave Zohar a Valentine's Day gift of a hotel room and a meal, and Shmuli Bateh, the Oisvov, etc. These are the people he does. He boasts about uh, his friendship with a, with a reform clergyman, a reform rabbi, and he does it for the benefit of people, etc. I mean, this person is misguided, and we want, we should have in mind, before we have in mind the Lamal Shinim on him, we should first have in mind that he should have a fortune lame, he's an engagement book, whatever it is, whatever the cover, whatever it is, and he gives himself in and probably he's paying money to try to fool the people and this is really outrageous. Now what would um uh uh the reason he gives us is, you know, this was before anti Semitism, etc. He has to fight anti-Semitism because of the Texas shul. So by having the missionary in his shul, somehow in a thousand people, this is going to fight anti-Semitism. And you know, of course, it's going to prevent anti-Semites from coming in and trying to shoot up uh, a, a shul in Texas. I mean, he takes us for an idiot. He takes us for a fool. But I'm saying even, uh, let's even say you're going to accept that far. Uh, still... We know that there are there are certain priests who have been pro Israel without mixing in. You know they they've they've really deferred to the and not brought in Christian language. And the, uh, there are people like that. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to go even if you hold that. Let's bring in somebody like that. Bring in a. You know, hey. Right, right. And this is not the first time he's had him. He's had him there before. Now, the point that he's saying even about there's not going to be any missionizing, obviously he wasn't going to missionize there that night. That night was about pro-Israel. But as Rabbi Hamnick said, and as I said in the past, he, he could use video clips of this and his association to capture himself. Now, the fact of the matter is when he tried to have the other, um, the Catholic evangelist, Matthew Kelly there, a week after Matthew Kelly canceled out the last minute because of pressure, whatever it was, whatever is behind that. By the way, again, I mentioned where Shmuel Kamenetsky wrote a letter opposing this. The chief rabbi of Israel warned him not to have that, and that might be the reason that Matthew Kelly backed out, in addition to Kelly getting bad publicity. We don't know. We'll never know. But a week afterwards, there was a literature distribution to all the Yidden in, in the Boca Raton area around the shul. So obviously, uh, you know, there is missionizing going on, and even he admits this. And in the last week or two, there were missionaries in Boca Raton. There were videos of missionaries standing in the street. So what Ephraim Goldberg is doing, he digs himself in deeper and deeper. Uh, he's totally untrustworthy. He owes a huge apology to the film community, and it's very painful to us that more Rabbonim and organizations are not speaking out. Now, you notice what he does. He, he does, uh, you know, there's something called guilt by association. So he does a non-guilt by association. He tells us that, uh, that Migdala Amik ex- accepts money from, uh, from Christian organizations, and he tells us that Mining Yeshua accepted money from Christian organizations for medical equipment and that are good at deals with, uh, with, uh, with, with, with the archdiocese to fight for tuition tax credits, and that's matter him to bring a missionary into the school. In, the school. in other words, everything is equal. It's, uh, the, it's, everything is proportional. 
And we're not allowed to be in Ain Das Havdolim in Ayin. If there's no Seichel. Now, if you don't want to have Seichel after Goldberg, don't you have Seichel? But don't try to make us into stupids. We're not stupids. And the people who protested against him are right. And the kindness of Yankel Bender that he boasted that went down after knowing this and being informed of this and gave him cover, it's very sad and very unfortunate. And the same thing with H. Kaidish Rabbi Weinberg. And uh, that's it. Now, we, we have very little time, but what does Rabbi Soloveitchik say? Even Rabbi Soloveitchik was writing back in 67 if the Ramesha contacted him and gave a certain latitude to having shaykhs on general subject matter, but nobody says that Rabbi Soloveitchik would have allowed this to take place, A, in a shul, where it has, it has ipso facto, a religious a connotation, you know, and um, and also if the guy is a Mesa Samadia, a missionary, he was talking about a Stam Galach, Rabbi Salavashi, that you could deal on so, so, certain social issues. And, 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 that, and who said that he would allow a Galach to speak in a shul? That's right, that's right. Rabbi well, Anderson, you want to tell us? I can read what he actually said. Go ahead. The here. Please, uh, please. But just so, important parts, because we're running out of time, and read it slowly, the people should chap it. Just the important sentences. The one where he speaks about the inferences, that if you can take uh, an inference... In light of the above, and this is all the... I request the executive committee of the RCA to refrain from participating in, sponsoring, or endorsing the interreligious conference uh, on conscience to be held in Boston during May. My objection to participation in this conference is not so much based on the list of topics which are to be discussed, since the vast majority of those belong within the sphere of social morality, but on the unfortunate manner in which this conference has been arranged and publicized. The impression has been conveyed that orthodoxy has revived its attitude towards ecumenicism and plunged into the mainstream of dialoguing and debating the most delicate and intimate theological ideas, which will neither contribute to, uh, to mutual understanding of the Jew and non-Jew towards the promotion and strengthening of a religious cause in general. I'll just say that, that's one thing absolutely brilliant. On, I'll say one thing based on this uh, line. Uh, Ephraim Goldberg is not the arbiter of what is ha uh, of how it's publicized. Because even if he publicizes this a hundred percent Torah-wise, the issue is how it's publicized on the other side. If this uh, priest publicizes in a way that goes that would violate one of our Salavatrix's rules, and he has many rules given in other letters he wrote. Uh, then it's uh, th then he would answer it. The issue at play is not how it's uh, what's said or even how it's advertised within the Jewish world. If in the non-Jewish world it's advertised and then it's picked up by a non-religious Jew, that's just as that's that's more problematic than if it's uh, because it could lead. That's the point that we're afraid of. Right, and again, this is if a person is known as a Mises, uh, any credence that we give him in any context is always going to be employed in support of his uh, promoting, you know, apostasy and, and, and idol worship. And to me, the biggest problem with this event is, uh, from what I understand, this rabbi has rabbi has rabbi pastor Torah study courses. Okay, and he's uh, so if you're having such an event, if this is about anti-Semitism in Israel, the first thing to do is take it out of the shul with somebody who talks about rabbi pastor Torah courses to make sure that this is seen as a totally secular event, and preferably instead of the rabbi speaking, to have the lay leader speak. Make Ben Shapiro the big, the, the 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 one running it, not Rabbi Goldberg. Um, so, um, what about what about Rabbi Salavachik? Does he say anything about this stuff? Uh, he does say when it came when it came to the to the to having the Pope recognize Israel. He said straight out, "It doesn't. No Jew suffers because of it. <laughs> no Jew suffers from the lack of recognition. From the lack of the Vatican's recognition of Israel. 
Right. Yeah, but in other words, I, I think part of the problem over here is Ephraim Goldberg's ego. He's going to solve the uh, the anti-Semitism problem in Texas, and he's going to solve the anti-Israel problem internationally by having this event with this Galach Gatkin de Shul because he's creative and entrepreneurial. I mean, to schmeckt from Gaiva, uh, the man is in uh, the man is in La La Land. The man is having an ego trip and the stubbornness of not backing up but digging in deeper and thinking they were all fools, it's really, really, very, very, very sad. Now, in the, the uh, voice is too... When around Soloveitchik was discussing the Jewish community pushing the Catholic uh, Church to recognize Israel, he said uh, he says it's a chutzpah uh, to tell the uh, Pope uh, uh, to, that he has to recognize uh, the state of Israel, and then he uh, he says. Uh, is there, and what do we suffer from the fact that the Pope does not establish diplomatic relations? Is there a single Jew who suffers because of the failure of the Pope to establish diplomatic relation, relations? Who is injured? Why do the Jewish people need that? One minute. So, so we yeah, see that there, is, that there is a certain, uh, we, there's certain things that we can do, but th- it's, you have to understand how this is, plays out, and Ravon Salvech was tremendously against ecumenicalism, or the appearance of such. I just want to read what the, in the Tshuva of Moshe, the letter that he wanted Rabbi Salvechik to sign, he writes, Ki yu isa gomu umboro she osa lasos kaburo is yachad to make gatherings rabbonim and primim rabbis with priests for low leos to conventions, not to be in conventions, not in Boston, not in Rome, not in any other Medina, the af loyal advorim ba'alma, and not for regular things, she'enim in yoni amunavadas, that have nothing to do with religion. Could you imagine what Ramesh would feel about having the background be in a, in a, in a shul? But like shumis napsos, without any excuses, with turutsim, any rationalizations, the hain also lesaya bishum dova, the Indian ecumenism.